4100 That's what I pay for my wife's Lamborghini Urus every single month. G-Squad, what's happening with y'all, baby? Tall guy in the flesh. Back with yet another legendary video. This legendary video is brought to you by and sponsored by your boy and the big G-Squad out there in the world because your boy Tall Guy just dropped a new bundle with the hat, with the shirt, and the goddamn shorts to match, man. Look at the camo G on the G-Squad with the red G-Squad with the good thick top of the MOOC embroidery. And I kept this fit a lot more calm with just the tan shorts with the black shirt and the black hat to match. Damn, your boy could be a low-key rapper, man. How I'm rhyming out here with hitting y'all with these bars, man. But shout out to all the big G squad. Every time I drop a new bundle, I see every name. Listen, I write the names. I pack it up in everything myself. So when I'm writing out the names, I see all the big G squad that have bought every last bundle every time I've dropped them. So to all y'all big G squad out there in the world, I just want to let you know, I see y'all salute and respect to y'all, man, because y'all appreciate y'all support. I appreciate more than y'all will ever know. So thank you very much, man. But for all the other big G squad out there in the world who haven't been able to cop the merch, maybe you've been in bad times, maybe you've been good times or somewhere in between, I've been there too. So for the people that can get it, I appreciate you. For, for the people that can't, I understand you and you're going to get there. So don't even worry about it. Just keep grinding, keep weathering storms, keep getting through it all, man. But for all the other big G squad out there who's in a good spot in their life right now, you want to go get the merch and support a great cause in the campaign with your boy Tall Guy because that's what the G stand for, right? Grinding, keeping the G. So if you grinding every single day and getting to your dreams, goals, and aspirations, and on top of that, you are sitting there keeping a G every way, every step of the way, and you putting your best foot forward every single day, then you G squad, baby. And if you G squad and you big G squad, go get your G squad apparel merch right now with the hat and the shirt and the goddamn short to match, man. Cause this joint's looking pretty fly. If you ask me now, I got the Grimmins on the feet. Them don't come with it, but stay tuned. Cause I'm gonna have some tall guy socks coming real soon. Damn them is bars. Sway that nigga is cold, man. Listen, man, let's get this video started. Click that link below in the top of the description right there, man. And go get your merch right now. I greatly appreciate it to all the big G squad in the world. Salute, respect, man. Let's get it. Police officer, talk to him, brother. No more. What is it, a month ago? Yeah. Resigned, man. No longer doing the police thing. But shout out to all the police out there, man, that's doing it. I still love, you know, police officers love the job that I did. I did a good job, you know what I'm saying? I was just not passionate about it no more, so I felt like I had to move on and try some new things and, you know, take some risk and, you know, dive into a couple different things I want to do. Yeah, big leap of faith. Big leap of faith and just try it out, man. I say, y'all know how I feel about the leap of faith. You know what I'm saying? And shout out to all the police officers out there that was doing their job the right way, like my brother does, you know, or was. You know, uh, shout out to y'all, the ones that ain't abusing the power, man. We need more police officers like that. But um, so today, y'all see the title, y'all see the thumbnail, and make sure y'all subscribe to my brother's YouTube channel, follow my Instagram, because like I say, he took a huge leap of faith, and that's what he said as well. Oh, yeah. So make be sure y'all tap in with him. You know what I mean? Be all of it. Yeah. it won't be Officer Jones too much longer. I'm changing the name after uh, my next video I'm dropping. It's like one more last police video, then I'm kind of. Switching things up. So, yeah, go over there, show some love, like, subscribe, whatever, man. Anything helps. And I appreciate it all. So, without further ado, let's just get to it. How much do I pay for my wife's Lamborghini Urus, which we're sitting in right now? The thing looks glorious, don't it, man? 4100 That's what I pay for my wife's Lamborghini Urus every single month. And that's just the payment alone. That's just the payment alone. That doesn't include uh, car insurance or anything like that. I think it's like a few hundred bucks max for this one. Um, it's not as expensive as it is for my Lamborghini Aventador. But if y'all want to know how much I pay for my Lamborghini Aventador, comment below. Let me know. I'll share that with a video with y'all. If you're a dude diligent and you're a big G squad, then you already know how much I pay for my Lamborghini uh, Aventador. I just talked about that on Fresh and Fit Podcast. Make sure y'all subscribe to them and uh, follow them on Instagram as well. Legendary people doing some legendary things. But yeah, that's pretty much all I pay uh, for Lamborghini. It's like, that's all. That's, that's a lot of money, right? But what's the, what's the like, maintenance for this? Because I know for like, over my videos, you'll see I did a Mercedes Benz. I drove that thing out here and some maintenance on that. It's kind of taxing for like the basic 
stuff is like six, seven hundred bucks. I don't know about y'all. I'm not rich. I'm broke. So uh, you and I both brother. Seven hundred bucks for like a oil changes and all that. It was like the first thing before twenty thousand. Let's just say we're both broke so, in comparison <laughs> to where we want to be. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So um, I'm just wondering, like, but that first twenty thousand miles, I know they hit me with little, little stuff and oil change and all that. So how much is that for something like this? Like, you have a Lamborghini or a McLaren and all that. How much like basic oil changes and tune ups or whatever? Uh, my Lamborghini Aventador is, uh, they said 2700 for an annual yearly service, right? And, um, 2700 Yeah, but they dropped it down to 2100 because, you know, I bought a lot of super cars from <laughs> Dropped it down and still, that's a, man, that's a, hey, but five, a mortgage. Six, five, six hundred dollars count, brother. Oh, it counts, but yeah. <laughs> so It is a mortgage. Think, yeah, don't think you jump it into a Lambo, man, unless you really can get it. A hundred percent, no question yeah. about it. Shout out to whoever's calling me, I had to ignore your ass. But, um, <laughs> no. <laughs> Making a video for the G Squizzle. But um, no, is you gotta pay to play. You yeah. gotta pay the cost to be the boss. Y'all heard all the sayings before. Oh, yeah. So, and another thing too is, I know a lot of people to uh, your no most regular person in the world who just ain't in this world of entrepreneurship or who ain't a YouTuber and don't particularly do specifically cars on YouTube, right? That's a lot of money for a car. But the thing is, it's really not a lot of money for a car when you think about what it brings back in return for me and for my wife, right? We get our personal uh, bucket list and checklist knocked off by paying that money by my wife having her dream car. You, when you're being a YouTuber, you're doing automotive stuff. It's like you got to find a way to knock out a bunch of birds with one stone. Right, my wife has her uh, ultimate dream car. Um, I was able to do that for my wife. You know, um, the other side of it too is we make money. We turn a depreciating asset into an asset that actually makes money. And is it still going to depreciate? For sure. But we still found a way to get money off a of depreciating asset. And you're still making money from it while you're paying it off. Right, 100. percent So, and that's that's the upside of it. And we get to live life and get paid to do something that we would do for free. Yeah. You know what I mean? Sure. Like. Even if I made it rich in life, which I'm not right now, I would buy the same car as I have. And even though it wouldn't have cost, it would have cost me money and it would have made me no money, yeah. I still would have did it. Like, had I made it in the NBA or you had I made it. You would have bought a Lamborghini. Bought a you know me, brother. But, and it wouldn't have been making you any money, which you just had it. Right. And in that particular case, it doesn't really make sense. Unless you got it like that. Unless you got it like that, or if you're just really passionate about it. Yeah. Right? Think about Floyd. Floyd got like 20 of the same cars, all blacked out, you know. Mm -hmm. He's Rolls Royce, Lamborghinis. He just has them in his garage, but he don't need to, you know, make money on them because he already has like right. a couple hundred million or whatever he has. He probably, he probably got to take more than that. He probably do. But Shout out to Floyd Mayweather. Shout out to Floyd, man. Yeah, but that's the only time it would make sense. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm definitely not rich like at all. But the thing is, though, is I'm rich in life as far as where we've come from, yeah. what we've been able to achieve, and my leap of faiths just panning out thanks yeah. to God. When you're comparing it to somebody like, you know, who has millions of dollars, it's a different right. ball game. It's 100%. And there's people with millions of dollars with no freedom. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And there's people with millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars that are broke compared to Jeff Bezos. You know, they feel like a it's broke a bomb, you know? So it's all paid. relative. It's all relative. It's up to you and what you do with your money that makes you feel, you know, makes you rich. You know? That is 100%. And I, I think what, what I would say I'm rich at in life is like being able to do what I do for the people around me. And having a free time to do what you want to do. A hundred percent. That's one thing that you can't do with a job that you can do what you're doing. What you know, I'm trying to do is everything. Right. You have a hundred percent. And you have no ceiling to where you can grow in. No ceiling. Right? It's a whole different feeling when you ain't got no ceiling. It's a whole different feeling taking that leap of faith because as, as well as there's no ceiling, you can also make nothing. You know? Of course, yes. With the, with the job, <laughs> you getting that check for sure no matter what. Yeah. But you can also get fired from the job. So it's the same. It's, 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 it's which one you feel more comfortable with. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, and in this cancel culture, you get canceled from social media. Exactly. It's over. Yeah. So you still it's got like people you technically got to answer. You're a boss. And you can do what you want, however you want, when you want. But you can't. But there's a there's yeah. a, there's a risk there's for everything. There's a fine line. Yes, 100%. Yeah. That is right. very true. So it's like that freedom is like I feel like what would I would classify as being rich like because I feel like there's a lot of people who have money but I wouldn't deem to be like rich in life yeah. you know what I'm saying that's rich and got money but don't got happiness yeah. but I'm happy doing what I love you know what I'm saying and I ain't got no money in comparison to where we want to be exactly you know what I'm saying so like this is a good thing right like so for your regular person they might hear four thousand one hundred dollars for a Lamborghini Aris that's a lot of money to them right and I got really good credit like my, my credit is upper echelon 1% of credit, you know what I mean? So, and I have a long rapport of owning and having cars and 
never having late payments and different things like that. So like that helps obviously. So imagine somebody with bad credit who had not Lamborghini yeah. 2021 earns. It's gonna be tight. Right? And, and if they could swing it, they're gonna have a lot of money down and their payment's gonna be really high. Yeah. And their interest is gonna be insane. You know what I'm saying? So 40, you gotta hear 4100 and understand I'm in that, I'm in the very small field of that's not bad for car stuff. And this is my business of what we do. So like I said, we're able to knock out a bunch of birds with one stone and we're able to get paid. We're able to turn our passion into money and essentially profitable, you know, profitable business. Profitable yeah. business. And it's a depreciating asset yeah. technically, but it's no different than what like enterprise does or a car rental company or anything like that. They buy these cars, whether they buy a cash or they don't, there's a note on them if, if they don't. And they, they've said they, these cars are being out all day, every day. So you got to think, if a person buys a Lamborghini Aventador and they put it on Toro, right, and they do four thousand dollars a day, right, and people are coming to LA and they want a Aventador, in four days they've made that car payment yeah. to that car, essentially. Yeah, yeah. That's a that's a good hustle. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So YouTube, even though I love what I do, I'm passionate about what I do, and I'm passionate about giving y'all this real transparent game that I'm giving you right now. Um, the thing is, it's still a job, right? At the end of the day. This is still a job for me. Like I business. have to do it because it pays the bills. Yeah. I want to do it because I love it and I'm passionate about it, right? And I'm passionate about helping all my people out there and giving y'all some videos, whether you're being entertained and you're just finding a good laugh or you're soaking up game like this and you're just looking for the game. However, whatever it is that you're tuning in my videos for, no matter what, it's paying the bills. Even if it's tuning in just to say you hate yeah, me just and you want to just troll my whole life, trolls. count my pockets, you know, this, that, and the third, like it's like, put everything under a magnifying glass and try to make someone who's not, yeah. I'm still getting paid and it's still a job. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, you got to sustain and maintain, but it's got to make money to make sense. This makes money and so does all my other cars. So it's like the day that it don't make money is the day it no longer makes sense. And if it yeah. don't make no sense, then what? Don't make dollars, don't make sense. Gotta go. Gotta go. I've had a lot of cars on my channel throughout the, the, the five years um, that I've done it, not in comparison to a lot of other YouTubers, but the thing is I still have had a lot of cars and with those cars have come big leaps of faith, big risk, but what comes with big risk is big reward. Big reward. You see what I'm saying? For a second. No, it's all good, brother. But <laughs> the leaps of faith, um, like my brother was talking about earlier, I'm going to kind of piggyback on it. It's like there is a risk that comes with the entrepreneur lifestyle, right? But there is also no ceiling. So if it goes good, it goes great. But if it goes bad, it's all bad. It's over. You know what I'm saying? It's type over. But like my dog, Mr. Gang, say, subscribe to the channel, follow my Instagram. I'd rather be a has man than I never was. You know what I'm saying? There's so many people that don't want to get out their comfort zone, out of their element, you know, to get out there and go for what they're really passionate about because their brain might actually be open to the fact that anything is truly possible and that you can attain these things and want these things and go get these things. But the thing is, is I remember when I first started my channel, people used to always say like, man, so how you get that? Okay, how you get that? Okay, whether it's lease, finance, cash, whatever, right? How do you get it? And I always told people on meeting grease and all the G-Squad out there that's watching my videos, that was all that, all these meeting grease, y'all be able to test what I'm saying. That it's not, it's hard to be able to get to the point to build credit, to, to put the money down and sustain and maintain these car payments for sure. That's definitely hard. But nothing is harder than sustaining and maintaining it. It's like somebody getting married, right? Anybody can get married. Yeah. How many people are going to stay married throughout their life? Yeah, that's tough. That's tough. You know, you got because people change. You go through things. Deaths happen. Uh, money happens. Uh, it's a lot of different things that have to go right in the relationship, and the fight has to be there in order for you can be passionate and really love somebody, but be divorced a year later because you know maybe y'all don't got the discipline or the structure that it takes to be able to continuously build. Maybe you can get through a few things, but you can't get through everything. So your passion and 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 sustaining and maintaining, you know, what you build for yourself is is more important than anything. Not just getting it, but sustaining and maintaining. So before you get in a relationship, before you uh, get a car, before anything happens, you should always think to yourself, can I sustain and maintain this? And even though when I started my channel, it wasn't necessarily smart to get a Hellcat, I would be lucky to make $1,500 in a month, yeah. right? At that time. Now, spring, summertime, summer, actually summertime, I'll take that back, summertime, fall is where I got most of my money, yeah. right? In the camps and different things yeah. when there's more business, more hours, yeah. more money, right? But in the winter and in the uh, sp spring, yeah, slow because everybody's in school, the college athletes are gone, NBA's in season, different things like that. So it was like, it was a huge leap of faith for me to take that uh, $1,000, because it was a $1,000 Hellcat with insurance and the car payment, $1,000, right? And I've been lucky to make 1500 in a month, and I'm literally tossing all to a car. And the thing was is, had I never made that one move, I would have never been in the position. Never be here now. 
I wouldn't be here right now. Yeah. Had I not taken the leap of faith, like then that wasn't smart financially to even get that Hellcat, right? Uh, Everybody around me told me. Yeah. Everybody said, don't do it. I ain't tell you not to do it. Not you. I just you said, didn't. There was only two people that told knew, me not to do I it. I knew you were going to, and I knew yeah. it was happening. I was just like, and enjoy it, because it might be repoed here pretty soon. Enjoy those three, <laughs> three, four months, whatever it might be. I think you might have said two months. Yeah, two months, man. I don't know what it was, but I, I was like, hey, have fun. You know what I'm saying? Because I need to go get it. No yeah. matter what. But and my brother knows I'm super passionate and I'm super driven. Yeah. You know, so and when it, when we didn't I'm know my about mind, YouTube though, we didn't. It wasn't like we didn't. It didn't like he said I'm gonna get the car and make YouTube make a lot of money. It was like I just want the car. I just want the car, and he's yeah. like, I'm gonna do YouTube because I don't see anybody like me doing YouTube. Once I had so the car, once I had it, once he had the car, so it was like, and he started putting videos out and everybody was watching. I was like, oh damn, bro, it's clicking. He's like, man, I remember you made six hundred bucks. You no, like, eight nine eight ninety something, almost nine hundred bucks on the first month. Yeah, you were like, man, I made. It paid the car payment and damn near all of my insurance. And that's all he was hoping for. It was like, you just pay the pay the car payment. And I was like. That's crazy. You made that much money from just some videos. It's crazy. And I was like, if he could just pay my car note and car insurance every oh. month, I'm good. Yeah. Free car. Free car. Yeah. In my dream car. That's it. And I get it for free. That's crazy. That's all I got to do is do some videos. It just happened. And the rest is God's plan. Because I, like my brother said, I didn't know what was going to come from this. I know YouTubers got paid. I just didn't know how they got paid. Yeah. Different things like that. So I just didn't know what was going to come from it. Uh, the rest was just completely God's plan. It turned into what it was. But long story short what i'm trying to say is had i not taken that leap of faith had i not taken that risk even though financially and technically i shouldn't have done it right to like a real sound person like a, a person logical, logical <laughs> person yeah for sure because you got to be typed out of there to do yeah. some shit like what i did for sure but the thing is there's always if you pay attention to the most successful people in the world they're always treading a thin line between yeah, on the brink of groundbreaking yeah. and, a, and and burying themselves yeah you know what i'm saying like is they're always trading a thin line. The all-time greats always have that problem, and I see it. It's very the common denominator that I've always seen with the super rich, super successful, and uh, super consistent and relentless people is their 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 genius mixed with a little bit of delusional. And Nip said it best. Nip said either I'm genius or you niggas is scary, or maybe it's both. And it's balance I deliver daily. Yeah. That line will always resonate with me because I feel like that's me, yeah. right? I just got to deliver that balance every day. You know, so some days you got to understand like. It's not sustainable to go 100 miles an hour every day, right? Like, you can't do that, you can't do that right? That's just not sustainable. We're human. So it's like, you, you got to have a give. And I've done that all throughout my five years on YouTube. So it's like, I've went moments where I went crazy, put it all on the line, let's go. And there's moments where I'm chilling. And I'm like, all right, hold on, let's sit back. Let's come up with a, let's come up with a plan. Re let's reevaluate different things. And every time, it might seem like a lot of YouTubers with cars, maybe, I can't speak for everybody, for just me, it would seem like there wasn't a plan a lot of times, but I've always had a plan every step of the way. Now, sometimes the plan works, sometimes it don't. So sometimes you can invest in a car and say, oh, you know what, this is going to do good. But what I always do is I always pick a car that I'm actually really passionate about, that I really like, yeah. because if it don't work, it's okay because I love the car. But if I do something for YouTube and just go for a car, and I don't really like it, and I'm just hoping that this get my YouTube channel to bust, then I'm stuck with it. And I might have be negative equity, you know what I'm saying? I might gotta pay money to get rid of it. It's just all around wasn't a good investment. Not at all. So I always go for the cars that I'm actually passionate about and the cars that I really like. So this was a car, like I say, that knocked out a bunch of birds with one stone. And that's always the deciding factor on whether I go with a car or I don't. My McLaren wasn't a car that I was super passionate about, but it was a car that I knew would get me into the door of being able to establish a level of credibility with these supercar banks yeah. where I could get my foot in the door and then I could ultimately get my ultimate dream car, which was a Lamborghini Aventador. Yeah. It's not an SVJ Rosa, but it's a Lamborghini Aventador. Just that, I got a foot in the door. hundred percent. I got two feet in the door with a yeah. Aventador. Yeah. I had a foot in the door with the McLaren. Oh, yeah. Two feet with the Aventador for I sure. I like that McLaren though. McLaren was really nice. I like that. I love the McLaren. It was a really nice car. But um, yeah, so that and that's ultimately what I do with my wife's Lamborghini Urus. And the reason why I say all this to you is because now for the people, there's going to be people that's going to pocket watch, that's going to disagree with whatever you say, always got something to say. Opinions are like assholes. Everybody got them, right? And on YouTube, it's really profound on how people want to express how wrong you are, how right they are, and blah, blah, blah. But a lot of them have never had cars like these, have never went through the process. They kind of sit back on the sideline and just kind of uh, try to poke holes in people's boats to get them to sink. But if you're not cash, you're not got a silver spoon, and you haven't just had everything given to you your entire life, you're going to have to go through a certain amount of steps to get to where you want. And the steps I've went through is ever since I started YouTube, being in debt, but there's a good debt and there's a bad debt. There's a, a bad debt is where nothing pays your bills, and the stuff you're going in debt for makes you no money at all. A good debt is what rich and successful people teach their kids about to do to leverage money because a lot of rich people 
they don't even use their own money. They leverage money from banks and different sources to fund their passions and then they get rich and then they ultimately give back the money to those people and then they take the profits and now they're rich. Is that a good thing, a good way to separate them is a good debt, a bad debt is by a liability and an asset. Well, shit, I mean, YouTube's kind of a liability. <laughs> YouTube's a liability and an asset. But I think that's just entrepreneur lifestyle, right? It it's, is. It's all of it. Right? Yeah, that's crazy. It is crazy, but the thing is, though, we're in a blessed position to be able to do what we're doing and be able to, like my brother said, have freedom to be able to do what we want when we want. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But that's, it's not necessarily suited for everybody, and it's not definitely not yeah. made for everybody. It's not. You know, some Having people. Your life on the line like that is tough. I mean, it I'm is. adjusting still. <laughs> <laughs> I'm adjusting. But how do you feel now that you're here, though? It's oh, like, I, I should have been did this, I, right? I feel great. I don't know about Ben did it, but. <laughs> <laughs> I think my timing was perfect for me. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. God timed mine perfectly. So everything lined up for me. I haven't thought about going back or anything like that. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't had any regrets about leaving or anything like that. So I feel good, man. I'm just excited for the future because there's no ceiling and I can make moves and kind of operate the way I've always thought, seen myself operate as kind of a boss and being my own boss and stuff like that. So, yeah. But not everybody's supposed to do that. And it's not bad if you don't do that. Like, right, that's a fact. Me leaving policing wasn't because police is terrible and you shouldn't be a police officer. I left police because I felt like it was good for me. But if, if you love you're policing, passionate yeah, about I'm it passionate about it. If you still love policing and that's what you want to do, that's a great career and that's a great, there's a lot of benefits that come with that and you'll be good for the rest of your life. So 100%. It just depends on what you want to do. So I'm not going to knock anybody with a good job or you know, that's doing something for their Facts. families and everything. It's just if you want to be a businessman, you want to be your own boss, you got to make that happen. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Just to piggyback off what my brother said, I was never a person that was like, "Oh, I want to be a boss." Isn't it? Like I'm, just, I can honestly say that I never wanted to be a boss. I, I know I wanted to be rich, but I'm talking about like I never wanted to be a, a famous person. I never wanted like you know. Have I ever said that? Like I never wanted to be that. I was just like, man, if I can get me a good hundred thousand dollar a year job after taxes, I'm good and I'm on. I can have the cars I want. I can have a nice crib and I can build a solid foundation for a future. Yeah. You know, like. I just coming from where we come from, yeah. like I was, you know, I was from where we come, sixty, seventy dollars. You on? You're on. <laughs> I'm not even sitting there even thinking about like, hey, you know, like it was like if I hit the lotto, yeah, I'd have a Lambo. But I wasn't ever like, I'm not even gonna lie to you and sit there and be like, oh, I'm, I'm gonna have a Lamborghini Vendor. My wife's gonna have a Lamborghini Urus. We're gonna have this big ass crib. We're gonna have a Hellcat TRX. This that. Come on. Yeah, it was never something. It was just like that's what's gonna happen. It's right. Just gonna happen. And kind of you God's went through way. this door and then these other doors were there but if you just stayed where that was at that door the other room you went to had no doors 100 percent. and i can yeah. honestly say if like you said had i not done that it would have been curtains right none yeah. of this would have happened one move that one leap of faith that i didn't take i wouldn't have been here yeah. you know uh one risk that i, sh I should have took that i didn't take same thing you go out there and you're like i'm gonna go get it but if it goes bad i i took a leap of faith to pursue my dreams, to to, to to turn the impossible to possible. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, there is like, had I not moved to LA, that was a leap of faith. That could have went bad. Oh yeah, for sure. But look what came from it. A lot. Everything. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? I was scared as fuck. <laughs> Two days before I was going, what did I call you and say? Enough, I don't want to go no more. And I was like, you need to go, you have to. Yep. That's all you gotta do. I talked to him, I talked to my dog, Mr. Organic. They both was like, I talked to my brother first and then Organic was like, yeah, bro. I agree with him. Gotta go. And I'm like, well, come on in, come with me then. He was like, hell no, you go first to the numbers. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he was like, shit me. So it's like, but the thing was, I went, took that leap of faith, and look what happened. And so just keep in mind the common denominators between my whole story on YouTube for five years. Taking leaps of faith the whole step of the way. You know, but with big risk come big reward. So just get out there and go do it, man. And I just want to make this video. I know we were just talking about the payment. That's why I gave y'all that payment information right through the door. But I think it's very important for people to hear this. Like some of y'all might want to just watch the pocket watch, but some of y'all are like, I really want to know what he's saying and how much he's paying because I may be thinking about doing the same thing. You know, and there's so many different ways to climb a mountain. You just got to figure out which way works best for you. Exactly. The steepest way might be best for somebody. Yeah. You know, they might want to solo with the free solo. They might want a free solo up there. It's up the mountain. Maybe it works best for them when they ain't got no ropes, no nothing. They just got to get up there and go. But then there's some people that say they, they got to go up all the different levels before they get to the death zone. Exactly. They got to stop, take a break, Everything. eat some hot cocoa, you know what I'm saying? It's <laughs> different stuff like that. But everybody just works differently. So it's like there's a million ways to do it. Just figure out which way works best for you and then just fucking do it. Don't care about what nobody say. Don't wonder if it makes sense to nobody else. Yeah. All it does has to do is make sense so to you. you. Yeah. Simple. So that's all I want to say, y'all. But anyway, man, anything else you think I should tell them to you? No. That's well, it, right? Your dreams, man.
Oh, you changed like my brother doing like I'm doing. You smart, though. <laughs> Oh, well, I'll see y'all in a minute, man. We're going to go get my hair cut up, man. The video don't end here. So just stay tuned for it all, man. And I'll uh, see y'all in a second. I'm gonna do a fade because I want to prove to my brother. He's been with me my whole life. <laughs> and he knows every time I try to get a fade. So I got like a colic right here. So my hair like stands up like for a big part of my hair. So it'd be, I don't like the way that shit be looking. So I always keep hair on my head. I'm, my Our whole life, it's the same thing, I've always had really long hair. Yeah. Majority of my life, I've had more time with long hair yeah, than sure. not having long hair. So to prove to my brother once again, because he thinks since I got old. Some little grease and do rag. Put a little birds, huh? Yeah, a little 360 style, you good. Okay, this is gonna be funny seeing Jazz reaction when I get home. That's gonna be hilarious. It's gonna be top She's never seen me with a fade. I'm telling you, bro, it, it, my hair is cool with a fade. It's just this part right here, bro. It just don't lay down. It's like a, it's like a big piece. Like it's gonna be cool. You'll be all right. So he just want to see me fucked up. Nah, that's, <laughs> that's what it is. Nah. So, all right, here you go. All right, let's go. Not because the thing is, the side of your hair is good though. All right, here goes. What's that got to do with the top of my head, nigga? It's <laughs> This shit is about to be funny. I'm seeing how low it's over now. He came back. See, look, I look, you look like you regret your decision, brother. No, I look, it look good. Now I look cool, though. I'm, wait, I'm, I'm gonna have to brush it and put some grease in there. Yeah. I'm telling you, even with grease, it's not gonna lay down, bro. Your memory is bad, bro. He's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, look, I think these just want to see me fucked up. Look at his face. I'm looking, bro, because I'm, I'm look at your hair is going all over the place. It's Weird, it does that. Right, <laughs> this side is good. It was cool. Yeah, that side is laid down. It was fine. Yes, yeah. but I'm telling you, this side over here is Jack. Come on, brother, you doing that thing again? You doing that? Nah, 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 nah. You know what they be doing? Nah, so, <laughs> the shit with the pressure when they touch your lip. You're like, yeah. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> he was like, what the? <laughs> nah, that nigga get wild. I see that too. I seen the client. It was funny. That nigga just opened his mouth. I was like, hell nah. Bro. For real? Yeah, that's why I stopped doing that shit. Oh, oh hell no. <laughs> <laughs> he was, he was, he was, he was low key going. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I've been waiting. Green light. <laughs> what did you say, D? I've been waiting. Was it the thumb you put in there, bro? Was it? Nah, check it out. Oh, that shit is tight. I'm alright. It's crispy, right? Yeah, it. but I'm telling you, you can still see my colic though, look. All right, that's, that's cool. I'm saying, one, I'm saying, once we lay it down, it's going to be in there. Appreciate it, brother. Mm -hmm. Look at that guy. What's up? What'd you see? Nigga look like Malcolm in the middle. All right, y'all, so we here at my dog, Mac, the Jacksons. Talk the to him, The Jacksons buddy. is in the house, man. Y'all tap into the Jacksons. Go subscribe, all that. Hit the link, hit the all the shit, man. Yeah. <laughs> my guy, uh, Officer Jones, did you switch your name yet, brother? Uh, yeah, switching up his name. Help my, help my guy find a name, man. Come on, chat. We got to switch that up. Being an officer no more. So, yeah, man. And, uh... Tall guy, car reviews, <laughs> and love and slim, man. Y'all go tap me Yeah, in, right, man. man. Tap me in my wife's YouTube channel, man. Sure. Do that yes, ASAP, you know. My bro, fresh as hell now. He fresh. He, he, he got the fresh, fresh cut, cut the man. Beard in there, I'm back. Yeah, you back. all the way in there. You all the way in there. You all the way in there. 100%. I'm me, out here. Me and Slim got the goddamn cow league. You know what's crazy? I didn't even know I had this in common. Me and this dude got so much in common. And then we find oh, out we got a colic in the same damn same spot. Same spot, right here in the front. I, I didn't even know that's why you kept your hair low. Yeah. I hate See, that's shit. why I kept mine long. As soon as my hair started growing, bro, like, when if we get that length, I'm wood. <laughs> <laughs> it's just cold. It's cold. I'm wood. So, so I keep it so low that you rarely you can't can tell me. Tell, really. Yeah, that's true. I never do that. Yeah, my shit. Maybe See, I usually kept maybe, mine so long. Maybe you you either gotta go long, nah, you either on, gotta go on. real long, or you gotta yeah, go long. We already know what that's gonna look so like. So Sway put this on the app on Snapchat, right? Look at this. Hilarious. <laughs> that's how I look if I was born. Yo, I'd be jacked. I ain't even gonna front. That's be whooped, bro. It looks so real, though. 
They do look like, good. They, they got the skin matching like perfect. It is that's like the tone. Crazy, huh? That's yeah, crazy. man. That's, can you grow a beard, bro? No. See, I got. But this is not adulty. But it's, it don't go all the way right here. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I never can tell that though. Yeah. yeah, see, it's like a little. See, I'll take like that. I can't get that much. But if I if I like start trying to go the whole size, I got I might have like patches and shit. Patches. So it looks like how my yeah, like, right like here. it won't grow in like right here. Yeah, I used to get like, like right here. It's like a right here. patch of hair. Oh, yeah, I, you I used, used to, to have one right there, right but there. now. But my boy was saying like once your hair start going, it'll all fill yeah, in. Once it'll you have cover that shit up. It'll cover it up. Have you tried recently? No, I don't like this. I don't like going through the stage. I don't like going through the stage. You go hold hug yourself. Oh, that's over for me. That shit over way too, brother. I gotta get a bunch of patchy whiskers. Yeah. And they get all under Yeah. Same thing. It's just ugly. It don't connect. It don't connect. Yeah, my shit like pubic hair, bro. This is rad. No, my shit don't even like pubic hair. Pubic hair is full. That shit look like ass crack hair. This shit right under the gooch. Yeah, bro. You gotta keep that shit true. That shit's bad, champ. You get a little quicker to cut that in, so. I can't do that. It's just so bad, man. But that's what I say, bro. I can't, bro. I can't do it, bro. I gotta. You know what I'm saying? That's why I usually keep my hair long, or I have long hair. Yeah. That's why I say that I don't make grow sense my hair though. out. No, no, it don't look bad. You still gotta brush it. It, it don't bad. look bad right now. It's just yeah. a fresh. And you, you know fresh your hair beard. long, and you cut it. Yeah, like, it's oh yeah. It look like, like, especially hair. when it's long. When I grow my hair out and cut it. It's, it's like straight. It's spiky. Yeah, mine's yeah, all sitting up. Yeah, look like right here. Diving board right here. Once you once you mess with this and do something cool. I swear. <laughs> They're gonna be like, what the fuck happened? You can sit here dying, bro. You're like, you're about to do a double front foot dive. <laughs> front off the front. He roasted himself. You're gonna look like Tory Lanez. <laughs> oh, his shit. When he was out there hooping. <laughs> shout out to Tory Lanez. Shout out, brother. Yeah, yeah, man. When his shit was fucked, brother. Yeah. I think it's like That's a forest fire. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Mike, I'll smoke you to bed. That's wrong with you, bro. Oh, shit. Oh, my. Oh, I'm not going to roast myself. I got good jokes even when it comes to me, y'all. Oh, shit. So, God. I'd be hurt if you just roasted me like that. <laughs> I can't roast somebody here. Like, that hurts feelings. And niggas are sick about my hair, bro. Either you think you go going ball or something. You, it's, oh, especially when you go going ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't do it when you go going ball. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. That wouldn't be cool. Oh, yeah. That wouldn't be cool. Niggas trying to save all that. Oh, man. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, that was good. Uh, no, man, we just out here having a good time, man. Uh, we'll all get back to us. We'll see y'all in the next video, man. We about to say bye to me. Anything y'all want to tell them? Yeah, hey, man. Subscribe. I need it. Subscribe, man. <laughs> we need help. <Yeah. laughs> SOS, motherfucker.